So, Monday? What time? I don't remember. I think it's 10.30. 10, 10, Jesus Christ, it's 10.30. early in the morning. We, we'll be doing a Zoom. The Zoom. With Corey Glover for the new Sonic Universe album. Yes, right. Corey just, uh, wow, that soul experience. What, what a, what a, wow. I, I can't say enough about you Thank tonight, you. brother. Uh, 10, 10.30, uh, Metal Voice. At least we're recording it at 10.30. 10.30. When you're going to see it, we'll have no idea. Welcome to the Metal Voice. First time on the show. Well, on a Zoom with uh, on the show, we had Kenny, who uh, so graciously spoke to you at the comic book store. Right. <laughs> Which I know you love comics. I guess you're a comic I, connoisseur. I am. I was just uh, I was just going through my comics. Um, I I thought I lost some, and then I realized that they're still here. Let me ask you this: as a comic connoisseur that you are, what is your most prized possession as a comic book? I have an Avengers from 1966. Wow. And I have a few others that are, that are pretty collectible. Um, this, this particular comic this is, my, this is my favorite comic. It has my favorite character. In it. So, um, and I actually have two of them and a reissue. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Are you more DC or Marvel? I'm a Marvel guy. Okay. One time I was a DC guy, and I, and I had lucked into some uh, Superman annuals that from 1957 at one point, and I don't know, and I, I think I sold them for less than they were worth, and I know they're worth a lot more now than they were then, but I, I sold those and, and no regrets. Keep going. It's the. It's the <laughs> It's always nice to see what other hobbies artists have, you know, other than just music, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've been contemplating which next uh, convention I want to go to, see if I can find some other things that I can, or see if I can barter or trade with. I don't know what's coming up next, but we'll see. All right, so Sonic Universe, a great, yeah. fantastic new project. It's, mm -hmm. it's. It is what it is out on May the 10th on your music. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I was like so impressed. I, I was like completely blown away uh, by uh, just so many aspects of this. Well, thank you. You know, I, I, I knew you guys had the goods, but once I heard the whole album, I was like, I, I, you know, this is in the contender of top 20, you know, top 10 albums of 2024. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, well, Corey, man. Yes. The, the secret to your voice. You're sounding better than ever. <laughs> well, um, the more you use it, the more you get, have it, you know, it's for me, at least I, I, all I need, you know, for, for my, for my instrument, it's, it's a, it's a muscle, literally. Um, it's a, it's something, it's like, like a runner. You have to keep doing it in order for it to work. Yeah. And, and I should mention, you know, uh, the, the new band, right? or the guys who are on this project, uh, Mike Orlando on guitar, right, from Adrenaline Mob, a bassist Booker King, yes. and drummer, if I mispronounce his name, please don't yell at me, Taquan Jackson. Taquan, yes, but that's Taquan. right. Close enough. Uh, Booker has been, was, was in my solo band for a very long time, and he plays with everybody, everybody. He's one of those kind of players. Um. And Taekwon is from a band, this metalcore band called uh, Sworn Enemy. And uh, I'm a big fan of Sworn Enemy. So I'm very grateful that he's, uh, he's there. It, it, it's amazing. You work with the best musicians all the time. I mean, what's the difference? Vernon Reed is, is an outstanding guitarist. Mike Orlando is an outstanding guitarist. He is. How, how do you work? Like, I mean, I guess the question is, what's the difference when you're working with each one of them? You know? I... Well, um, I, Mike is one of the best guitar players I've ever heard in my life. Hands down. Um, 
I, I, I say that with some, with, with some authority because I've worked with some of the best guitar players there, mm-hmm. there, there are to know. Um, very obviously, I've worked with, with uh, George Lynch. You know, I, I, I've been in Earl Slick. I've worked with a bunch of really, really amazing, amazing guitar players. Um, but I have to say that Mike Orlando is one of the best that I've ever heard in my life. He's the most amazing, the most amazing guitar player. And he does, he's the best at what he does, in my opinion. And for the people who know Living Color, but they have not really heard this album, what would you say would be the differences, the, 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 the little differences? Well, it's, I think, I mean, just in terms of themes, it's not as socially bent as it is, you know, emotionally bent. Emot- there's an, an emotional thing about this particular record that's not, that, that is a rare occurrence with Living Color. How would you describe the musical direction for someone who's never heard this? Well, it's a sort of a combination of, you know, Mike's, sort of thing, his stuff he's done with Adrenaline Mob and the stuff he's done with his own solo work and and and, and some of my work. The, the, whatever I bring to the table is 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 from you can hear from in my discography. So it's uh it's a bit bit of a combination of both of those things. Is this gonna be a band that's gonna tour or is this strictly a project? No, we're gonna definitely we're gonna go on the road as, as soon as we possibly can. My schedule um, doesn't particularly, it's, it's not there just yet. I mean, I got lots more work to do with Living Color and we're making a new record. So um, when I am free, which will probably be in the fall, we'll go out and see what, what what's out there for us to do. That's very exciting. Uh, for Living Color, when do you guys expect to come out with an album in 2024 or 2025? Probably 2025. Are the, are you guys like almost done, or are you working? No, we're not even close to done. We're still we're still in in in, in the phase of what this is going to be. So it's going to take a minute before we get to before we get it to to where we want it. I think the first time I saw you guys was on Arsenio Hall. You're doing okay. Cult of Personality. Uh-huh. I was come, and I think you started jumping singing in the stands. Do you remember that? Yes, yes, yes. I walked up into walk up into the audience. I was so blown away by your performance. I was so blown away by the musicianship of the band. I was just, mm. it, it, was, it was sort of like, that's, that was my love for the band from that right. point on. What do you remember? Were you nervous going on that show? I mean, it was a big show, Arsenio, back in the day. It was, it was. And, you know, there's a lot of, you get, you get nervous when you get there. You know, you sit there and then you wait. And then you wait. And then you wait some more, and then the, the nervousness sort of starts starts to die down. Yeah. yeah. Then it, then once the audience gets into the room, it comes back. And then so you have to temper what what you're feeling and how long you've been sitting there together to figure out what you're doing. It's and 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 then the reaction afterwards. It's usually pretty good, you know. Um, audiences. You know, that particular audience, I don't know if they they knew of us, you know, at that particular point. By the time we got on to Arsenio, we were on MTV all the time. So there was always somebody there who, who knew what we were doing. They weren't, they had never seen it done live though. So it was a bit of a shock for some people to see it, see us doing it live. Always cur- curious about the middleman, the song, the lyrics, mm. the theme. What was that all about? If you don't mind me asking. Um, in hindsight, it was just about enjoying where you are about, you know, you don't have to, at that point, in that particular point in my life, it was about staying where you were and enjoying that, that place where you were somewhere in the middle. You weren't on top, you weren't on the bottom, but you're somewhere in the middle and you enjoy being there. Uh, now it's it's sort of a, a song of you know in, in a particular climate that we live in now it's you're somewhere that you're it's a very observant sort of spot space that you're in that you can watch 
what's going on everywhere, good and bad, and in between, actually. So you're just trying to figure out what's there, and you're, and that's how you how you take take care of yourself and the world around you. Right. Open to letter to the landlord if you want me to, if you don't mind me asking. Mm. Is it more relevant today than it was back in the eighties with the gentrification? Well, absolutely. It's it's much much more relevant now than it was then. I think. I think. Well, so the toilet landlord was a uh, it, you know was uh, was about gentrification more yeah. than anything else, and to to know that that idea still pervades and is and has been weaponized in so in certain cases. Um. Is still a part of this whole thing. I was also reading about, which I didn't know about this as I was going to your background, the show yeah. Living Color, which we all knew back in the day, and Living in Color. Li in Living Color. In Living Color, I'm sorry. In Living Color. There was there was some sort of headbutting, right, back in the day of, of yeah. the name? Yeah, well, basically, um, before the show had even been greenlit to go on network television um the producers had called us and asked us if we wanted to be a part of it and we politely declined and we thought because that we declined the use of the name that they would change that and they didn't and fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you look at it the show became a, a, a big success and its success sort of for us, made made some sort of confusion in the marketplace. And as you say, when you say "Living Color," they think, "Oh, you took that from the TV show." It's like, no, we were around before the TV show. This is not about the TV show. This is not. This is. These aren't. These aren't jokes. We had a we had a very serious and very. We had something to say, and we wanted to, wanted to be taken very wanted to be taken seriously with what we had to say, and. It took it. It, it was. It, it could be difficult. It, it could be difficult, and we we negotiated and, and made some sort of concessions, and they made some, some concessions. And you know, the TV show is a classic, and I think Living Color is a classic. So let's let's call it a day. Was there anything in the in the Living Color history that you would have changed or you would have done differently in, in sort of the trajectory of, of the band? No, no, no regrets, didn't. no regrets, none. We have, you know, what we've done and what we're doing is, is going to continue and we have no reason to stop. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to say anything else about uh, the uh, Sonic Universe and the band, the album? Sonic Universe is, it is an amazing record. I think people should go out and listen to it and, and buy it and buy it and stream it and download it and get as much of it as you possibly can and, and hopefully we'll see what out on the road and we'll be playing it and you'll see how it really sounds <laughs> any um, biographies books movies about your life living colors life or um, movie documentaries you know like a lot of bands are doing that and yeah we like get that we're, we're planning on we're planning on doing a documentary wow. pretty soon yeah, and I don't think that's going to happen. That's not going to come out until next year or so. Okay, you're at the negotiation stage, I guess? No, no, we're just trying to figure out where, where we're going to do it and how we're going to do it and what we're going to talk about. I think it'll be a great documentary. I agree. <laughs> on that note, I know you got another interview. Uh, it is what it is on May the 10th. Ear Music, a pleasure to have you, Corey, after all these years. Living Color, Sonic Universe, and so much more. You're... You're even going out. You have another, uh, I believe, you have another, your Living Colors playing soon. Is yeah. that correct? We're going, to, we're playing in Rock, uh, the Rockville uh, Music Festival. Um, we're doing a bunch of stuff in, uh, we're doing some spot dates next month. We're going back out on the road. We're going to Europe in the end of June and into July. Mm -hmm. uh, we go back out with uh, Extreme in September, and then we go into South America in, in, in October. It's amazing. Anyways, look forward to seeing you on the road. Look forward to the new music. And uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. 